Hello, this is Carl Irwin with a, a quick breakdown tutorial of a recent project that I uh, posted uh, on my YouTube channel. It uh, was made up of this video right here. So this is sort of what we're going to be looking at. Now the project we're going to look at is a little bit different, does things slightly differently than what you see here, but you can see that uh, we have this text uh, in a scene and uh, also there's these uh, light rays that seem to be animated and moving around this light coming from the uh, top part of the uh, scene here. Uh, and uh, it seems to be shining down and casting uh, these rays through the scene and you can see uh, particles are being lit up by these rays uh, as the particles kind of move through the scene and the text moves forward. You can also see some uh, a little bit of uh, shadow uh, casting that's going on here among the light rays. So I uh, just wanted to show you the project and kind of demonstrate a few techniques for you. Uh, we're not going to build this whole thing uh, from scratch. We're not going to build any of it. I'm just going to break it down for you and explain some of the techniques. Uh, so this would require that you have some understanding of Blender and already uh, uh, be familiar with uh, some of its capability. Uh, so if you're a beginner, this isn't going to be a very uh, easy thing to follow or understand. However, I would invite you to look at some of my other tutorials on my uh, YouTube channel uh, to uh, learn about some of the techniques that are uh, used in this project uh, in a little bit more depth and uh, that would uh, help you understand just a little bit more. So uh, again, just uh, take a look at this. You see these particles moving through space and uh, they're being illuminated by these light rays uh, and uh, some shadow casting here and of course this uh, text movement here. Um, this is entirely an OpenGL GLSL scene. There is uh, no compositing that is done via the compositor. Uh, this is not using the new uh, Light Ray plugin, which is, by the way, very, very cool uh, in the compositor, but this does not utilize that. This is all real time rendering. Uh, and uh, there is a little bit of uh, color correction in this uh, particular instance in some um, uh, reframing of the uh, lens here. There's a bit of a lens distortion effect that was added using another uh, project that I have, a, a rig that I use for that. But otherwise, uh, what you see is what you get uh, in the scene. So let's take a look at the scene real quick. This is the scene, the original scene. You can see the aspect ratio is 16.9. Uh, my final video was uh, a different. It was 2.35 by uh, one, I believe is what it is, uh, anamorphic widescreen. So this is the original output and then I uh, ran it through a rig to uh, change it later on, but this is the original scene. And uh, just so you see, we are in GLSL shading mode and uh, if I uh, go back to the beginning and I play this back, you'll see that, uh, as I said, what you see is what you get. We're, uh, we're seeing all the same things here. Uh, you can see these light rays coming through. It's hard to see in GLSL shading mode. You can see them a little bit, but these um, uh, little particles. If I render a scene here using the OpenGL button, you'll see the. Uh, we can zoom in a little bit better and see these uh, particles. See all these particles floating around in there. So, this is all uh, real time, uh, right in the uh, right inside of the one scene. Now. Uh, as a, another side hobby uh, that I do uh, in my spare time, <clears throat> I, ever since I was a little kid, have done close-up magic, particularly uh, card magic. I kind of—it's the only thing I really deal with anymore—is uh, some, you know, card handling, card tricks, things like that. And one uh, basic truth of uh, uh, magic, um, of, of illusions, is that uh, the secret of the illusion is always is always not nearly as impressive as the effect itself, meaning that uh, once you understand the secret, you really feel kind of stupid about uh, falling for the trick in the first place. And uh, once you know the secret, it kind of ruins the effect for you and doesn't seem quite as uh, interesting anymore. So uh, I promise you that once I move out of this view and you see what's going on, you'll be um, probably very disappointed to see how this is put together. But it brings up an interesting point uh, that the goal in any kind of visual effect is to get an end result, not to necessarily um, not to not to necessarily let the means be the end, but rather uh, shoot for an end by whatever means necessary to get to the end. And I think sometimes when we're looking at the Blender in particular and some of the functionality and features that it has, we tend to uh, kind of uh, uh, restrict ourselves to focusing on the means rather than the end uh, and uh, we you know we want every single kind of feature that we possibly can ever get inside of the program and uh, that's not necessarily 
uh, it's, it's not necessary to get uh, some of the end results that we're looking for. Uh, that there's, you know, a, a thousand ways to accomplish anything and you just need to use one of them. So uh, with that in mind, let me come out of the um, camera view here and show you what's happening. So if I rotate around, you're going to see things don't quite line up right. Um, so you see that there are these image planes here with some light rays on them. Uh, we're going to talk about how they're illuminated here in a second. And you also see behind the text there's a couple of planes here of uh, uh, two-dimensional uh, images, and it's just kind of a streaked shadow that matches the text. And if we go back to the camera view, you can see how this is really, this is a two-dimensional composite in three-dimensional space, which is what a 3D compositor does, takes those two-dimensional elements and then composites them within 3D space so that they can be animated and moved. Uh, and it, 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 it's just placed in such a way so that from the camera perspective we get the result that we're looking for. Um, so we're treating again, we're treating the uh, viewport uh, here as if it is a composition layout. And we're placing things into the viewport scene as if it were a two-dimensional composition within 3D space to get our uh, end result. So let me explain what's happening here. This, uh, these image planes uh, are actually an animation. In fact, let me open up a, um, let me open up a browser here and show you what the animation is. Um, so it is this here, a light rays animation that I made, and I'll explain uh, how I did this. So you can see this playing back. And it's just these bars that are kind of moving around. What this is, is it's an image plane uh, in Blender that has uh, the wood texture set to it to give us ripples, and then I put a normal uh, kind of a texture on it so that uh, all of the um, parts that are facing away from the direct uh, view of the camera are uh, projecting this white color and then it moves off to a gradient of black and there's a couple of um, uh, of these wood textures on this image plane causing these ripples and uh, they are parented to a couple of empties that are moving in contrary motion and it just generates this waveform kind of uh, an imagery and I just made a 250 frame video of that uh, and I save this and you can use you know you can create these elements and textures to be used uh, in other projects later on so I uh, generated this uh, image, and this is exactly what is being used inside of our scene here. I import that uh, as a 2D, uh, as, as an image plane, and uh, I set my frames to be uh, 250 frames long. And then what I did is on the uh, image plane, let me find the material here. Here's my light rays uh, material. I put in another material, which is a Fresnel material, uh, if I click on it here. And uh, it is uh, set with no specularity, and it is uh, set all the way up to white. And what this is, is it's actually a mask, so that when a light, a point light, shines on it, it will illuminate this. Uh, and in pl places where the light is not reaching, uh, it would, in effect, be uh, black. So um, I use this, then, as a material inside of the uh, node editor to affect my base material, my light rays material, as a mask. So here's my uh, Fresnel material responding to this big point light in the scene. And wherever the point light is illuminating these planes, these image planes, it will affect as a mask on my uh, light rays material. Okay. Now all of these materials are set to an add blend mode in the uh, material slot uh, via the uh, Blender game engine. So if you go to the game engine side to the materials, you can set it from uh, alpha or uh, opaque to uh, an add mode so that all of these things will add. These were also created from foreground to background so that uh, they would uh, be transparent and the alpha transparency would follow the draw order uh, restrictions of uh, OpenGL. If you don't know what I mean by that, I invite you to look at uh, my recent tutorials where I discuss draw order. But essentially the rule is that uh, in order to use alpha transparency beyond one bit, meaning that there's a gradient of transparency, all of the objects that are in the scene must exist from the point of the camera to the background in the order in which they are created, which means that the planes that are in the foreground must be created first and in order until you get to the back.
Okay, so you have to have some planning in setting this up. So I've got a, a few instances of these planes with this uh, material node set up. Also on there I have another material, which is uh, this kind of a specced material. And what this is, is it's actually a, um, a lens grit uh, image that I created for my uh, GL lens flare pack uh, that you can get on BlendSwap. And uh, I just imported this lens grit uh, image and I uh, mapped it way up so that it's, uh, it's duplicated, I think, about 10 times here, uh, mapped 10 times over uh, on the UV of that plane. And this is what it looks like. And then uh, what I did is in the node editor uh, for this material, I placed it in there and uh, I cranked up the uh, curve so that it would bring up the contrast. And this is also mapped via a mix node to the lens, uh, rather to the uh, um, light rays plane, uh, using the light rays itself as the mask. So what happens is, is if you look closely here as I play the animation back, wherever the um, light rays are illuminated, it brings out these little specks, and wherever the light rays are not illuminated, the specks disappear as if light was being cast off of these little particles. And because, let me move this back, because the uh, planes are moving through the scene, if I go back to my camera view, it would appear as though these particles are moving through the scene as well, uh, uh, coming forward at the camera. So it's kind of a... Um, a texture-based particle simulation, although there's no particles there. They're just little dots on two-dimensional planes, and they're set in three-dimensional space. Okay, So we're using the material setup and the compositing uh, features that we have for the materials in the node editor to accomplish many, many tasks all in one easy shot, in one easy pass, on one texture, one material. Okay, And that actually uh, creates a lot of different things for us all at one time, a lot of different effects that otherwise we would have to composite individually uh, in the uh, video sequence editor and another compositor. Okay, So we're using the uh, material itself as a compositing tool. Okay, so that's the light rays. Now, for the um, shadow in the background, usually when you have light rays uh, casting, you need to have shadows that are casting that interrupt those light rays. Now, what I did is rather than affect the light rays themselves, I uh, exported a camera shot of my text uh, with alpha transparency enabled, so I could just see one shot of my text. And I took that into GIMP. I turned uh, the text, which was on an alpha transparent background, to black, and then I applied a directional blur to create uh, this uh, kind of a, a fall-off uh, shadow effect. And then I imported that image as a plane, and I set those in the very back, right behind my text. Now, these were created via a separate draw order. So what I've done here is I set all of my image planes for my uh, light rays uh, to, I parented them together once I had them set so I could animate them together, and I set them to x-ray so that no matter where they're at in the scene, they will always uh, show up, even if they're behind other objects. I set my light for masking in front of my text. The text is a shadeless material, meaning that there are actually materials and textures on the text that make it appear as though lights are in the scene. Again, I have tutorials on my channel to describe that, but there's no lights really on this text. And then I placed my uh, shadow material, my shadow text material, in the background here, two planes of them. And what I did is I set those in the... Uh, uh, object settings to transparency so that no matter where they're at in the scene in relationship to the x-ray materials the uh, uh, alpha transparency will function now it's important that I'm using two different instances of this and the first one created needs to be the first one in front so among these different settings x-ray transparency or nothing all of those objects need to be created using the draw order restrictions from front to back now, a quick note on that. Um, I've learned that you can actually reorder your draw order, uh, and it's just kind of a little bug. It's, it's not really meant to be used in this way, but here's what you can do. If you add an empty to the scene or another object and then parent all of your uh, cards, all of your alpha transparent objects to that object, and then unparent them one at a time from the foreground to the background, back out into the main scene, it will reset the draw order. 
Okay, so let me say that again. If you parent all of your objects in the scene, all of your planes, to another object like an empty, and then unparent them from foreground to background, it will reset the draw order in the scene and correct it. So that's a little trick for you to use. So uh, hopefully you find this useful. I wish, uh, uh, there's a few other things in here. I have a little lens flare back here that's also set to uh, x-ray, and I've done that in some other scenes. But that's, that's the gist of all of the uh, complicated parts of this. So uh, hopefully you find this useful, and uh, I wish uh, all of you uh, good luck with this, and uh, happy blending.